How do you take inspired action and stay on track with your intentions instead of pushing through? In a light and breezy way, you manifest. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about today on the Manifesting Guide. But just before we do that, would you like to manifest from a wish list? You can find your wish list creation process at HigherTrueSelf.com forward slash freebie. Welcome everyone. This is Ariana Rollins with the Manifesting Guide, Podcast 60. Stay on track with your intentions. It's so important that when you take time to set an objective for something, you want it to happen and you want it to be in a flowing way and not forcing. So today's show is about staying on track in a unique way by translating the messages that life gives you, watching for those synchronistic signs. That's really Manifesting 101, essential knowledge to know about, because without that, we can set objectives, set intentions, we can have lots of wishes and desires, but it's just theory, because we're not paying attention to the right things, and then we don't take advantage of opportunities. So it's really important to know that when we are tuned in and watching and observing the right things, then we're in flow. Well, what takes us out of flow? Well, negativity, fear of something happening that we don't want to happen. It's not going to work out. We have our doubts. We have just life gets in the way. We get triggered. I mean, that's part of living on planet Earth. It's not a perfect place. So how can we stay on track, know what's our responsibility, and let go of the rest? So when you get triggered, what's happening is that a memory has been activated in your unconscious mind, and that can fill you with doubt, dreadful thinking, oh, it's going to happen again, you could start to feel hopeless, and then a part of us just gives up. And the unconscious mind can continue that by infusing you with doubt, saying things like, gosh, if that fails, I don't know if I could survive it. I'm not going to go through that again. Oh, what's the point? Why should I do this? Now, if you think about the unconscious mind as your personal record keeper, and it's really good at doing things on autopilot. It's the part of you that gets, helps you drive a car. It's the part of you that helps you run a complex computer. But when that part of you is allowed to run willy-nilly and decide what to pay attention to in the outside world, well, that's how we get on tra- off track. So think about this part that does the doing, your unconscious mind. Think about your body as the storehouse of your unconscious mind. There's nothing that it doesn't notice, nothing that it doesn't register. You can be driving down the Autobahn in Germany at 90 miles an hour, and your unconscious mind is measuring everything, which enables us to drive a car safely. So if you're listening to the radio, if you're having a conversation, all that stimulus while you're driving down the road is taking, being implanted in your unconscious mind. Well, that's not important, you know, what's happening while you're driving a car, unless, of course, you're having an argument with a loved one on the phone. And then that gets stored in there as well. So how this works is that anything that's emotionally strong, I see it like this. It's almost like the glass gets etched. Your unconscious mind gets etched. Pay attention to this. This is survival, especially if it's scary or, you know, you're about to lose a relationship. You go on hyper alert. You are now in survival mode. And it's not a really great place to create new things. It's not a great place to manifest if you're in survival mode. So you want to become aware of these early warning messages when you're getting triggered so that you can take your power back from your unconscious. You'll be less reactive in the moment. And instead of falling to pieces when something happens, you'll be able to stay present and choose your response. That's a lot about the power of staying on track. Also recognizing your patterns, you know, because you're in a powerful position if you can stay present even with 
the outside world going crazy or your inner noise and doubts happen. One of my patterns that used to sabotage me in my business started from early childhood. I was the quiet one in school. I didn't speak much at all. In fact, my nickname was Miki, you know, like the, the um, meek to be meek. I was just invisible in the shadows. And then I noticed when I would see someone being bold, confident, what I used to call self-aggrandizement, you know, a promoter, a business person. And I watched that and I was like, oh, I don't think I could be like that. That's not like me. It's not safe to be bold. It's not safe to speak confidently about what I know. All of that got into my unconscious mind, watching other people and also the childhood experiences. And I can gratefully say that I've cleared those beliefs, what I call in my line of work blockers, which are self-defeating unconscious habit patterns. And I've got access to that confident, bold expression in a way that's right for me. It's not self-aggrandizement. It's not being obnoxious out there. So if I watch somebody else and I'm reactive, that's a clue. That's a message that that blocker was was activated. Why would it matter if somebody else was big and bold? It's because I'm not being big and bold. See how the blockers can work? So we want to stay present. We want to stay on track, especially when we've got something meaningful that we want to accomplish. So the unconscious mind is receiving all this information at such an alarming rate. You can't even imagine. You go through your Facebook scroll, your feed, and you see this image. You see that image. You read everything, even in the sidebar, all the ads. And perhaps there's somebody advertising a program that is similar to what you teach if you're self-employed. And you can feel yourself going, Ooh. Oh, this is not needed. It's already out there. And that can stop you. You're starting to get see how this can happen and how fast it is. Because if we're making decisions from the blocker parts of us, the parts that are trying to keep us quote unquote safe, it's usually ego parts, and it's from a three-year-old perspective, it's not very mature, right? It's not coming from our skill set, our maturity, our age now. It's coming from that two or three year old perspective. And if you're 40 years old, well, is that relevant? Is that going to help your life at all? No, not at all. So be present when you get triggered. Notice, are you having a certain thought when you get off Facebook? Are you noticing it in your body? Here's a really powerful insight. If you've been triggered, your body will often respond. And that's a sign that the blocker has been activated. Because you remember what I said about your emotions get stored in your body. The experience that you've had gets merged with that emotion. And that can create what we call a blocker body feeling. So start to pay attention to it. And especially, you know, if life doesn't feel like it's going your way, ask yourself, hmm, do I have a blocker in there? Am I being hard on myself? Am I being hard on others? Am I being hard on life? Maybe there's something trying to protect you from disappointment or failure. And now is the time to pay attention. If we don't stay present, our past experiences will dictate our future. And the unconscious mind is not really good at making decisions. That's supposed to be our conscious mind. So, Let's talk about the thought police. (laughs) And I'm not saying we have to be like super aggressive watching our thoughts, but just notice, did you have a thought and how do you feel, right? And if you have that thought and you have a place to write it down, make note of it. If you have an experience where your energy drops, make note of it, all of this, is going to help you with such great awareness to be able to stay on track. There's an exercise that I teach. It's not a great name, (laughs) but it's an exercise I teach in the Highest Potential Program. It's called Trigger Awareness Process. 
And I'm going to share a little bit more about that with you here. We're already talking about write down when you have a negative thought or your energy drops or your emotions get activated and start to notice again, what are you feeling in your body? Where are you? Who are you with? Start to pay attention because that is power. That's pure gold. Because if you catch the thought early on, then it doesn't turn into an emotional mood. And then the emotional mood starts to turn into a little bit of uh, lack of energy, frustration, despair, and that takes us off. Oh, it's so so self-defeated when we listen to that and we're run by our emotions. Emotion is powerful. I wrote a chapter in the Manifesting Guide, the book that's going to be released soon, and it talks about channeling those emotions so that you can use it to manifest your desires and your intentions rather than being subject to them. Because, I mean, we could be subject to the any willy-nilly message out there. You watch a commercial, you listen to the radio, your body feels a little achy after you, you know, wake up and you're like, oh no, is my back going to be tweaked? And you start to have those things running in your mind and they start to grow, right? (laughs) You've been there, right? And especially as we get older, we start to get worried, right? So how to stay on track, observe, record when you get triggered and If you're interested in actually changing that trigger from self-defeating into be a success pattern, then that's something we absolutely, I can help you with. I'll leave some show notes so that you can jump into one of my favorite home study courses to start to clear that resistance, get rid of that blocking energy. So you stay on track with your intentions more and more. If we don't stay present, our past experiences will dictate our future. And the unconscious mind is not really good at making decisions. That's supposed to be our conscious mind. So let's talk about the thought police. (laughs) And I'm not saying we have to be like super aggressive watching our thoughts, but just notice, did you have a thought and how do you feel? right? And if you have that thought and you have a place to write it down, make note of it. If you have an experience where your energy drops, make note of it. All of this is going to help you with such great awareness to be able to stay on track. There's an exercise that I teach. It's not a great name, (laughs) but it's an exercise I teach in the highest potential program. It's called trigger awareness process. And I'm going to share a little bit more about that with you here. We're already talking about write down when you have a negative thought or your energy drops or your emotions get activated and start to notice again, what are you feeling in your body? Where are you? Who are you with? Start to pay attention because that is power. That's pure gold. Because if you catch the thought early on, then it doesn't turn into an emotional mood. And then the emotional mood starts to turn into a little bit of uh, lack of energy, frustration, despair, and that takes us off. Oh, it's so so self-defeated when we listen to that and we're run by our emotions. Emotion is powerful. I wrote a chapter in the Manifesting Guide, the book that's going to be released soon, and it talks about channeling those emotions so that you can use it to manifest your desires and your intentions rather than being subject to them. Because, I mean, we could be subject to the any willy-nilly message out there. You watch a commercial, you listen to the radio, your body feels a little achy after you, you know, wake up and you're like, oh no, is my back going to be tweaked? And you start to have those things running in your mind and they start to grow, right? (laughs) You've been there, right? And especially as we get older, we start to get worried, right? So how to stay on track, observe, record when you get triggered and If you're interested in actually changing that trigger from self-defeating into be a success pattern, then that's something we absolutely, I can help you with. I'll leave some show notes 
so that you can jump into one of my favorite home study courses to start to clear that resistance, get rid of that blocking energy. So you stay on track with your intentions more and more. To stay on track with your target, your objective, your intention, even if the world interjects doubt. It's so important for you to realize that when you attempt to make meaningful changes in your life, there will be little things that happen. Maybe your own beliefs, blockers, or other people get triggered. And it's sad to say, but it's often best to keep your intentions quiet to yourself. Because uh, let's say somebody wants to shed weight and their spouse knows that they've tried 10 different diets and that none of them have helped. And in fact, you've put more weight on after the diet. So if you come home and you're all excited, I found this new diet, it's the blood type diet. And I know my friend has shed so much weight and she's got great energy now, I'm gonna try it. Well, your spouse doesn't want you to be disappointed. And there's this expression that is sad, but very true when other people are trying to protect us or they have been activated by a blocker. So if you've ever seen a bucket of crabs The other crabs in the bucket, if one of the crabs is trying to get out, starting to climb out and being successful, the other crabs will pull that crab back down. Now, who knows why? Doesn't matter. We are not crabs. But I think it's a good visual because generally people don't like change. Even your spouse may not like change. What if you did shed that weight and you became super attractive? They might think, oh, you'll leave me, right? So we don't need to understand all of that. Doesn't matter. But we do want to make sure that we're not doing things to sabotage ourselves. So I know we would all like to experience a slimmer body, right? But who wants to stop eating the sweets? Who wants to stop eating the burger if you eat burgers? Or who wants to get out of bed when it's cold and go for a run? So it's obvious. We like the results of change. We want that. But the process of change, uh uh-uh, not so much. Most of us don't like. So here's just the truth. Here's the real deal truth. When we want to accomplish something, there's going to be change. How do we prepare for it? That's super important to prepare. One is just be aware. Aware that, oh yeah, I'm gonna get triggered. I'm not gonna wanna get out of bed when it's cold, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And that's a lot of what I like to really empower people with, to have mastery over their body. So one of the the tools or one of the core underlying teachings that I bring in, in our programs comes from cybernetic transposition and it's a weird word but basically it talks about having conscious control over our body so when you want to do something you follow through on it when you choose to no longer have sugar in your coffee you stop doing it instantly wouldn't that be grand So that's exactly what we do in all of our programs is give you the tools to have mastery over change, mastery over your body. Here's another thing. When you set an intention, a target, an objective, the bigger it is, the more resistance to change can come up. It's just the way it is. And the bigger the objective, the more you've got to keep it quiet to yourself. And it's not that people don't love us and want the best for us. It's just simply crabs in a bucket or sadly, sometimes human lower nature because people don't like change, even if the change is good for them. I'll give you an example. And this one was really surprising to me. I did a little bit of research on the 10 most stressful life events, and it's based on the Holmes Raw Stress Inventory, H-O-L-M-E-S-R-A-H-E, and you can take a little quiz there. So they're looking at what can impact someone's health, and these are the top 10, and we'll go through them fast. Death of a spouse, divorce, marital separation, imprisonment, death of a close family member, personal injury, illness, marriage, dismissal from work. 
Now, did you notice in that fast list, marriage was in there? What? Marriage is a good thing, right? Isn't that curious? Why would anyone think marriage is a stress? It's something we go into consciously. It's something we want. We're in love. Yeah, it's stress because it's change, right? Another interesting thing to observe about this list is how many of those more stressful events relate to other people like spouse, death, divorce, marital separation. That's all about relationships. That's four out of the 10. And if we put marriage in there, that's five out of 10, which says that learning how to relate with with others in a successful, loving way has got to be high on our priority list for stress management and staying on track with our intentions. Learning how to deal with life stresses can make a major improvement in the quality of our life, let alone our health. And it's going to keep us on track with our intentions, right? And we know there's enough research that says stress reduces our health and it's the underlying issue with disease. So it also, if we're coming from that centered, peaceful place, we're more relaxed, we're more loving, we're more creative, we're coming from our core. And then we're able to notice when a subtle shift happens in our mood or a message in our body, or we can take action on a synchronistic message. It's just amazing. If we're attuned to that, it's like getting guidance, like you're driving down the highway and you're going to a new destination and you've programmed in the Google map targeted destination. When you set your intention and you know where you're going and you know where you want to be, you know how you want to feel at the end, you can kind of just let the Google maps guide you, but it's not Google maps, obviously. What it is, is your unconscious mind can guide you harmoniously there. And so paying attention to the things that trigger us, to the things that make us feel a little nervous, uncertain, or we feel that a pain in our body where we normally don't have pain. So how can you translate these messages accurately and be able to use them to navigate decision points in your life, especially after setting an intention. It's super helpful. So we're going to go through a 10 minute daily focusing process that brings the best out of us and can bring our awareness to the messages that are happening in our life. And it's something that I do generally after meditation. And I have a a practice process that I do and I'll share with you a few tips. So this is something that I learned from Julia Cameron, the Artist's Way book, is to write down whatever is going on with you immediately upon waking. Maybe go to the restroom first and just take a blank piece of paper, no edits, and you just write and write and write. And then as you're writing, you might start to get some clues about something that's troubling you. You can circle that. And then don't allow a lot of time, maybe 10 minutes. But if you do that on a daily basis, you're going to start to tune more into your unconscious mind. And that's going to help you be able to notice those choice points, listen to that Google Maps or your intuitive mind to make that decision. All right, I'd love to share with you now one of the uh, one of my biggest manifestations. It's so amazing. So I was in a bit of a stressful relationship and I I had this thought, I wonder if meditation would help me relax. And then I thought, well, how do you learn to meditate? You know, this was back in 2013. Well, a few weeks later, I received an email and it was an invitation to a women's empowerment week in San Diego. They have different lunches and talks and one lunch gathering looked quite interesting because the keynote speaker was Deepak Chopra. Deepak Chopra at that time happened to have a center in Carlsbad for healing and meditation. That's where I live. I've never met Deepak Chopra, but I know a lot of people speak highly of him. And I thought, yeah, I'd like to meet him. So I booked the lunch, paid for it, and 
I sat up very close. I was at one of the tables right in the front, and it wasn't that large of a room. As he comes to speak at the podium, the first words out of his mouth were, my healing center has asked me to inform you we are gathering people together for research subjects for a particular study. We're looking to determine whether meditation can extend the longevity of a person's life. He starts to give the criteria. You've got to be non-smoking between a certain age. If you've already meditated, that's okay. Or you're brand new, that's okay. Well, I'm like, whoa, this is amazing, right? (laughs) I just asked, how do you learn to meditate? And then I meet, I don't know, he's probably one of the premier, if not the premier teachers of meditation in his particular way, I think he is. So I was like, whoa, I make note of the website and I, you know, go home, I go to the website location and I apply to be part of the research study. I didn't hear anything back. Then a week later, I get a phone message. We'd like to speak to you to see whether you're a candidate to be part of our research study. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm excited. So I call back no answer. I call again and again and again and again, leave messages. I can't reach them. Finally, I get a message another a week later and they say, you need to call today. Otherwise you can't be part of it. So I called until I got through. And in the interview, she asked me questions. Then one of the questions brought some contradiction up. I could feel myself saying, no, I don't want that. Eckhart Tolle was going to be speaking at the Chopra Center during that week of the research study. And I had already paid for very expensive tickets to go to uh, Eckhart Tolle's talk. And the research person said to me, hey, if you're really attached to seeing Eckhart Tolle, we can't have you in the group because there is a control group that doesn't learn to meditate. Don't worry, you get to go to the pool, you have great food, and you get to stay in this five-star hotel. It'll be a really nice time. And then she says, there's a group that does learn how to meditate. You, you, it's a spiritual retreat. It's like, I would think it was five days or seven days. And you learn primordial sound meditation from Deepak Chopra. So I took a breath. I found myself in a bit of contradiction. And then I said, I'm okay. I know I'll be in the right group. I definitely want to apply. Please consider me. I let it go. I was completely clear. The next week I found out I was selected for this study and Here's the good news. I got to be part of that spiritual retreat by Deepak Chopra and learn primordial sound meditation, and I got to meet Tole. Super cool. And in the audience, guess who was there? Well, Wayne Dyer was in the audience, and Tole recognized him and invited him to come on stage. I mean, like, triple win, right? Now, what would have happened if the blocker took charge of me And the woman was interviewing me and she could feel I was very attached and I would not participate, be a good participant in the study. It would have canceled it. It would have shut down the opportunity. And that's what can happen when blockers wake up. You set an intention and if you're not paying attention and you're not translating the messages, then the blockers will influence the course of the outcome, your success. So I have a question. Have blockers taken you away from something that's important for you to do right now? If you've, you're excited to make positive changes in your life and you want to do it in a way that's easier and natural and aligned with your higher wisdom, I do recommend you get the wish list kit. And I'll put the, the link in the show notes. And coming soon is a flash sale. And I want to make sure you know about it because if you're not on my email list, you won't hear about it. So click the link in the show notes to get your create a wish list to realize your dreams. And that way you'll be notified when we have our flash sale. Super exciting. Remember, you don't have to settle for what's going on in your life at this moment. If it's something that's really right for you, you can change it. If it's something that you want to accomplish, you can manifest it. You're learning the tools by listening to the manifesting guide and you're on a path. Otherwise, we would not have met. Thank you so much for listening. I'm so grateful. And remember, when you confirm yourself, you free yourself to be you, the most powerful, unstoppable you. So much love. 